All right, in this video, I'm going to be looking a little bit at what is inside of these three parts of the matrix that we can multiply together to recover the covariance matrix. And uh, inside of these things, and in particular inside of S and VH, uh, there are these values and vectors called eigenvalues and eigenvectors, respectively. And, um, and you'll learn a lot about those if you take a linear algebra course. Uh, I'm just going to show you some of their cool properties and also um, kind of demonstrate what they show us about uh, variance. All right, so the place to start is in this VH, and VH is for eigenvectors and they're horizontal, right? And that's why this is often VH, right? So they're vectors laid out horizontally. Um, so what does that mean? Let me look at these. Uh, this first row uh, is a vector, eigenvector. The second one is an eigenvector, so on and so forth. And, um, and so let me try pulling one of these out, right? So maybe let me get the uh, zeroth eigenvector. Uh, you know what, let me, let me kind of just show you like this. I can get that zeroth eigenvector and peek at it. And so you can see I'm pulling out that uh, first row here. Uh, vectors, right, should, when we're doing um, the matrix multiplication by them, generally need to be vertical. So I'm gonna reshape it. And I'm gonna say negative one, one, like we usually do. I'm pulling this out as a vertical vector. But let me grab some other ones here quick too. So maybe I'll get, um, you know, vector one is, is kind of pulled out from that one row one and, and kind of oriented vertically, so on and so forth. Check some of these. So this, this one here is pulled out, out from here. So these things are called um, eigenvectors and eigenvectors have one uh, property that really is their definition. And that property has to do with what happens uh, when we multiply our original matrix by an eigenvector of that matrix, right? So each, each matrix we might have might have different eigenvectors. So, so let's see what happens when I multiply. I'll do a dot product by my original matrix by an eigenvector of that matrix. Um, I get this other thing. Maybe, maybe if I, uh, I do it like this. It won't, it won't put it inside of there. Okay, so I get this thing, and uh, what's special about that, right, relative to my original matrix, right? So I, I multiply my original matrix by this um, vector, and I get this thing. The cool thing about this is that uh, this output vector here that I get after I multiply this is just some rescaling of my original one. Right? That's very special, right? Most vectors I might put, put here um, will be kind of shooting off in a different direction. They won't be a, a kind of a uniform uh, rescaling. What, what do I mean by rescaling? I mean that if I multiply um, this output vector by the input vector, you see it just kind of increased every element by uh, 2,353, right? When I see, when I do something like this, right? When I multiply by a vector and then divide by the original vector, I have all the same values. That's how I prove that um, that it's an eigenvector, and um, and I can do this for the other ones too, right? Um, I can see that one is uh, some different multiple, right? But it's the same multiple in each spot, right? So I guess uh, I verified that v1 is a is an eigenvector, uh, v2 is an eigenvector as well. Now these numbers I'm getting down here, right? These multiples are what we call eigenvalues. Right, and you can see that it's pretty straightforward. If I have the eigen, um, if I have the eigen vector, I can get uh, the eigen value out of it. Uh, but that was the other piece that gets given back to us, right? It turns out that this S um, contains all of the all of the eigen values, right? So I'll make a note of this S contains eigen values, and so let me just show you that this is true, right? So I'm just going to look at S here. And uh, maybe maybe it's a little bit easier if I if I kind of convert it to a list, so there's not that ugly rounding. Um, so let me let me try zero again, right? So I see two, three, five, three. Bingo. Let me try this one. Right, thirteen, sixty-five. Bingo. So let me let me pull this down here, this comment, right? I really want to emphasize that. So I do this. Right, so I have those eigenvectors are, are kind of horizontal. When I multiply those by the original matrix, I just did a rescaling of that. Um, each of these corresponds to a value, which is, well, by how much is it rescaled? 
Okay. So what's cool about this? Well, uh, if I look at all the eigenvectors, oh, I guess I have them as here. You say I have these bigger values first. Um, that's not always always true, um, depending on what version of the software you're doing. Uh, but these bigger values means that more of the variance is captured along along these dimensions. And so something I might I might do right is I might take um, s, which is my eigenvalues, and I might divide it by the sum of that, right? And when I'm doing that, then I can actually get these values down here. Uh, which are showing me kind of how much is captured by each of these portions. Another thing I can do is I can take the cumulative sum of this, and what this is telling me now is that in just a single dimension, I'm capturing 63% of the variance. Right? If I just take two dimensions, I can capture 99.9% .9 of the variance, which, which that tells us exactly what we were expecting to see. Of course I can capture... Um, most of the variance with two dimensions because when I look back here, these two columns here, um, you know, apart from some noise, tell me everything I need to know, right? I know the width and the height, and I can compute the border, and I can convert to other dimensions, right? So I've learned something by looking at um, at these eigenvectors. Uh, or I'm sorry, I've learned something by looking at these eigenvalues and their relative sizes um, about how many true dimensions there are in my original data. Okay, and, um, and so one of the cool things as well, right, is before I've been um, reconstructing these pieces to get back to the original, and, um, and maybe, maybe let me just show you here, let me have the original down there. So I was able to reconstruct them like this. I could say um, U times S and then that. Uh, let me just put this here. That's, that was my reconstruction. And let me put that in a data frame. The cool thing is that uh, I don't need to use all of my information since most of the information is captured in just two dimensions, right? So but here I'm getting those same values back. You can see this is the same matrix. Maybe, maybe I'm just trying to do this again too, right? I'm going to say this is the same, uh, the same index and the columns are going to be the same columns. Right, I can reconstruct that original data. You can see these two matrices are the same. Uh, but what's cool is that I learned here that I only really need these two dimensions. And, um, and what that means is that for each of these, right, instead of taking that whole thing, uh, I just really need those first two um, vectors, those first two eigenvectors. This one, I only need the first two values in there. Um, this one here, I guess I only really need uh, the first two uh, columns, right? So here I'm, here I'm taking the first two rows. Here I'm taking the first two columns, and I and I do that, and you see that I'm getting very similar values, right? Even though I'm kind of reconstructing with a, a kind of a fraction, only forty percent of my information, these values up here are very similar to down here, right? I guess I see it's a little bit different here. Here's one seventy two, down here's one seventy three. Let me, um, let me just. Uh, use this, put this in a variable, right? So I'm using two components of my information, right? Oh, uh, and components is two. Let me put this here, right? I'm using kind of a fraction of these pieces to reconstruct the original thing. And, um, and if I used all of them, right, then you see I get exact values, right? 173.36. Right, but you know, we were told based on this analysis that two is going to be really good. We get ninety nine point nine percent of the value there. What if I what if I go down to only one dimension? That's not going to be so good, right? If I only go down to one dimension, then I'm only capturing sixty three percent of the variance, right? So if I drop this down to one dimension, then I can see well, actually, there's huge errors uh, between these, right? Still better than nothing, right? But there's there's quite a, a few differences uh, between these um, two matrices, right? So just to review, right? So we have this singular value decomposition, um, which gives us three parts, and the most important parts are the eigen values and the eigen vectors. And um, the eigen values are cool because they tell us how many dimensions we actually need, 
And we can basically do compression this way, right? We could uh, kind of store a subset of these three parts um, that capture enough of the variance and then reconstruct something very close to the original. All right, so go do some practice and then we'll come back and, and do some more reconstructions like this.